Hello students who are learning from home today. Today I videotaped a lesson for you because we are taking our science test during class and then when we finish the science test we will do a math lesson but I'm not exactly sure what time that will happen so I didn't want to I, I couldn't really set up a live stream appointment with you so I thought I would make a video lesson. Some students think that this is actually easier to follow so I would love if you told me which you like better um, video recorded lessons or live streaming with our class. The first thing we're going to do is get warmed up. So you will need um, a piece of paper and a pencil, or you can use your personal whiteboard if you have that at home. We um, press play when you're ready with your materials, and we're going to solve some problems that reveal what we've been learning about. All right, so I think you're back with your materials. First, we have been learning how to estimate products by rounding the factors. So here on your paper, write down 409 times 21, then do those squiggly equal signs because that means we're rounding. And round each of your factors to a number that would be easier to use to multiply. All right, I would round 409 to 400, and I would round the factor 21 to 20. Now, if you chose different numbers, for this one, I'm not really sure you would have, but sometimes you choose different numbers, and as long as it's reasonable and makes sense, you can choose those numbers. If you chose the same as me, you would end up with a product. Four times two is eight times 100, we add two zeros, times 10, we add one zero, and our product is 8,000. Let's try another one. What if we have, oops, 287 times 64. 287 times 64. Draw your rounding equal sign to show it's an estimate and round your factors to two factors you think are easier to multiply by. For this one, I would round 287 to 300 and I would round 64 to 60. You may have chosen 65 and that's fine, but I like to round to the nearest tens place or hundreds place, it makes it a lot easier to multiply. Then I multiply this, three times six is 18, times 100, I add two zeros, times 10, and I end up with 18,000. Okay, you try another one. 3,875 times 92. Press pause, solve this problem, rounding the factors and multiplying, and see what you come up with, then press play to check your answer. Okay, for this one, I rounded 3,875 to 4,000. I rounded 92 to 90. Then I multiplied. Four times nine is 36 times 1,000 times 10 is 360,000. Did you get that answer? If you did, that's great. If you didn't, go back and look what happened. Maybe you rounded these to a different number. Maybe you rounded this to 3,900. That would give you a different answer and see if it comes close. It should come, it should be close to 360,000. All right, let's try one more. 6,130 times 37. We're gonna round that and solve. Press play when you're ready to check your answer. All right, welcome back. 6,130, you probably rounded to 6,000 or 6,100, and 37, you most likely rounded to 40. Six times four is 24 times 1,000 times 10, 240,000 is your product. All right, that's a quick review of the things we started learning last week. Then we moved on and we started 
decomposing multiplication sentences. We were actually writing them in words and in numbers and doing a lot with that. And today's lesson is all about this. So I'm gonna show you a quick review of decomposing multiplication sentences. So on your paper, I want you to write down 12 times three. Now you may already know the answer for that, but remember what I told you, sometimes it's easier for me to show you a new strategy with an easier problem. And then we can take that strategy and apply it to more difficult problems. For this one, I want you to think of 12 threes and how we could decompose 12 to make this an easier multiplication sentence if you didn't know your 12 times tables. So 12, I could decompose that. And I could say, instead of saying 12 threes, I could say eight threes plus how many threes? Eight plus what number will give me 12? That's right, four. Eight times three plus four times three, or eight threes plus four threes is the same as 12 threes. Eight times three is 24 plus four times three is 12. 24 plus 12 is 36. So we know 12 times three is 36. It's just a different strategy to help you with multiplication problems. Let's try one that you probably don't know in your head. 14 times four. We can decompose 14 to make this an easier multiplication sentence. So instead of saying 14 fours, I would take out a 10 because I know what 10 times four is. And then I would say plus what times four? 14 fours is equal to 10 fours plus how many? What number plus 10 will give me 14? That's right, four. 10 times four is 40, plus four times four is 16. 40 plus 16 is 56. Now, could I have decomposed this in a different way? Absolutely. I could have had, think of some, some possibilities. Yeah, that's a good one. Seven plus seven is 14. So I could have had seven times four plus seven times four, 28 plus 28 equals 56. There's lots of ways to decompose this to make it an easier multiplication sentence. You have to find the one that works for you. Let's try another one. What if I have 13 times three? How could I break that into two parts to make it easier to multiply? Instead of 13 threes, I could have this many threes plus this many threes, as long as the numbers equal 13. So I like 10. So I would say 10 times three plus what times three? 10 plus what equals 13? That's right, three. 10 times three is 30 plus three times three is nine, 30 plus nine is 39. So 13 times three equals 39. All right, let's try one more. 15 times six, what times what plus what times what can we use to solve 15 sixes? Press pause, see if you can figure it out, and then press play when you are ready. All right, for this one, I would break 15 into two numbers that I know, 10 and five. 10 plus five is 15. 15 sixes is equal to 10 sixes plus five sixes. 10 times six is 60, plus five times six is 30. 60 plus 30 is 90. 15 times six equals 90. 
All right, so I hope this strategy helps you think about some different ways to combine numbers. Now, the last thing we learned last week was evaluating expressions that look like this. So we had numbers like this, 11 times 15 plus five. And evaluating an expression means just solving it. So right now on your paper, I'd like you to solve this equation, find out the value. Press play when you're ready to check your answer. All right, for this one, you work inside the parentheses first. 15 plus five is 20. 11 times 20, two times 11 is 22, times 10 is 220. This equals 220. Let's try another one. On your paper, write 41 minus 11 inside of parentheses, the difference of 41 and 11 times 12. Press pause, solve this problem, Press play when you're ready to check your answer. Okay, for this one, I said 41 minus 11 is 30. 30 times 12. 3 times 12 is 36 times 10 is 360. All right, on your paper, write 75 plus 25, the sum of 75 and 25, 38 times. Press pause, solve this problem, and press play when you want to check your answer. Okay, 75 plus 25 is 100. 100 times 38. One times 38 is 38 times 100 two zeros. Okay, last problem for our fluency section. 20 times two, so the, the product of 20 and two plus the product of six and two. Or we could say the sum of 20 twos and six twos. Press pause, solve this problem, and press play to check your answer. Okay, for this one, we did 40 times two, 20 times two equals 40, plus six times two is 12, 40 plus 12 is 52. All right, I hope this was a good review for you. Next thing I want you to do is go get your blue learn book, open up to page 127, page 127, in your blue learn workbook and do the application problem. If you don't have your blue learn workbook at home, this it, I'll read the problem right now. So if you do, you can just turn this off and go solve it. And then you'll come back and watch the next video, which is, I will show you the solution. You can check your answer and then we'll do today's lesson. If you don't have your book, I'm gonna read it to you. This is the problem. Jonas practices guitar one hour a day for two years. Bradley practices the guitar two hours a day more than Jonas. How many more minutes does Bradley practice the guitar than Jonas over the course of two years? So this might be easier if I write it down for you. Jonas practices one hour a day for two years. That's the first important bit of information. Bradley practices two hours a day more than Jonas. How many more minutes does Bradley practice the guitar than Jonas over the course of two years. Remember, this is a read, draw, write strategy. 
do your best, try to solve it, and then you can go to the next video once you finish solving this problem and check your answer.